Hi, this is Dale Thromberry from Veterans Radio, and I want to welcome you to our program today. In fact, we've got a special guest host that's going to be uh, talking to you today about veteran entrepreneurship, and his name is uh, Dr. Eric Fretz, and Eric is a 20-year Navy veteran who served uh, three tours overseas from Operation Desert Storm through Operation Iraqi Freedom, and he is currently teaching at the University of Michigan. But before we get to Eric, I wanted to make sure that we thank our sponsors, and that would be Legal Help for Veterans, specializing in veterans' disability claims. Call Legal Help for Veterans at 800-693-4800. The National Veterans Business Development Council, better known as MVBDC, the nation's leading third-party authority for certification of veteran-owned businesses. For more information, you can go to their website. That's nvbdc.org. The Eisenhower Center, providing residential and outpatient treatment for those who have suffered from traumatic brain injuries, post-traumatic stress, whether you are a veteran or a first responder or an athlete. doesn't make any difference. They treat you all. And you can find more information for them by going to EisenhowerCenter.com. A U.S. Wings is the manufacturers and retails of the finest leather flight jackets in the world. They also manufacture and sell all kinds of military paraphernalia. Go to USWings.com for more information. And make sure that you register to win the flight jacket being offered by U.S. Wings uh, right here on Veterans Radio in our last program of our month, which is always our benefits program. So if you go to VeteransRadio.net, Click on the jacket and register. Your name is entered into the contest. Hopefully you will be the winner. We're also sponsored by the Charles S. Kettles VA Medical Center here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So without further ado, as they say, here is our guest host, Dr. Eric Fretz. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of Veterans Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Fretz, and today we've got some great guests lined up to talk to us about entrepreneurship for veterans. So we've got some real luminaries here in the state of Michigan. I'm joined with Matt Sherwood, Julie Cowie, Michael Hyacinth, and Kristen Gapsky, and we're going to go ahead and get to their introductions shortly. Um, as your host, uh, I'm a, a local veteran who served 20 years in the Navy and retired. I currently work now at the University of Michigan. I'm also the Selective Service State Director for Michigan and do a variety of small business and charity tasks around the Washtenaw County area. Um, so I have a real interest in veterans and a real interest in entrepreneurship, since most of my teaching and courses at Michigan are in entrepreneurship. So this is going to be a great episode, I think, across the board. Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our guests, and I'll just bring them up one at a time. First, we have Kristen Gapsky from Washtenaw Community College. She runs a fantastic resource, the best thing at WCC that not enough people know about. They have a wonderful entrepreneurship center that they hide away in a little building off in the woods. Uh, I don't know why they do that, uh, but uh, I guess it works great because if, then if you know about it, you can go take advantage of it. Um, and so she's going to talk to us a little bit about what they offer there. She's very interesting, uh, graduated from U of M and also has a master's degree from Australia. That's interesting, right? You know, and um, then um, has been running the um, WCC Entrepreneurship Center for quite a while. So Kristen, tell us a little bit about your background and a little bit about the program there at the Entrepreneurship Center. Well, hi, good morning. Thanks, Dr. Fretz. I'm Kristen Gapsky. I'm the director of the Entrepreneurship Center at WCC, like Dr. Fretz mentioned. And about me, um, I found myself falling into business ownership uh, in the 90s and ran a business for about 15 years from the very seed of an idea all the way through um, selling products, retail, and then shifting to wholesale and realizing that was a better market for me. Um, and I did importing of products, bringing them over, designing of products, selling of products, wholesaling of products. And it was a nice, it was a nice business. I ran it about 15 years and then moved overseas. So I needed to sell it. Um, so I very much understand that business that uh, running a small business and that sort of isolation you can feel with your head in the sand, just sort of going, 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 growing, growing, sure. growing. Sometimes you don't know where the connections are or the people are or the supports are. Um so later when this job came up at WCC to open and build the entrepreneurship center, I was super excited. Um, for me, I knew exactly that feeling uh, of what it's like. So I wanted to be on the other side of it and provide the resources and the connections and 
the networking, even though some people don't like that word, but um, meeting and, and connecting and growing through those connections is really important um, and really could make or break a business. So the Entrepreneurship Center has been open since 2014 at WCC, and it's totally free and it's available to anybody. So that means anybody in the community or anybody on our campus. So you don't need to be WCC affiliated to use our services. And we, we seem to get most of our clients, we're, we're countywide, of course, and um, we get lots of clients from the Detroit area, Flint area, Jackson area, but mainly from Washtenaw County and mainly from the eastern side of our county. So there's lots of areas in our county, uh, rural areas, um, eastern side of our county who may have not gotten supports in the past, um, marginalized groups, underfunded groups, um, micro enterprise business owners. And what I mean by that is small business owners who are often running their businesses solo. They're solopreneurs and they're just, you know, again, head down, running their business, trying to grow, trying to build and don't often get the support through banks or through other business support organizations that they really need. So the center is a really open, welcoming place for anybody, again, uh, to come in and to start talking and I can, we can move on, but I can tell you more about different programs as we, as we talk throughout the program. So thank you. Awesome. That's great. Um, and we also have uh, Julie, uh, Julie Cowie and Michael Hyacinth from the Grand Valley State uh, University's um, Veteran Entrepreneurship Lab. That's a subsection of their Center for Entrepreneurship that does a lot of really great work in the community, wonderful programs. And the the um, Veteran Entrepreneurship Lab I think has been around since, I guess, 2018 and has had a number of cohorts go through. It's a really cool kind of like a, I think about what, a three-month program. So Julie uh, and Michael, tell us a little bit more about uh, that program and all the great stuff it does. Sure. So we did launch, as you said, Dr. Fretz, thanks for the invite also. Um, in 2018, after uh, the director of the center, Sharuk Amala, noticed that veteran students at Grand Valley did great with entrepreneurship. And the minute they graduated, all those supports and opportunities disappeared. So this program is really focused on the community and it is for veterans and military connected people in the community who have that drive and sense of mission and want to start something. And then we surround them with education, you know, facilitated learning that adults like where it's focused on their own idea, modeled around the business model canvas, supported with prize money at the end of every cohort, comp- competitively distributed. Mm-hmm and connections to the entrepreneur ecosystem. And I'll let Michael chime in too. Yes, thank you, Eric. First and foremost, go Navy. Yes. Um, I served uh, in the Navy as well as a CB. Um, and uh, uh, one of the things that the Navy does, it, it really gives you a, a, a core of different initiatives to partake and participate and learn from. Um, and so, you know, I really think that being a um, being a, an entrepreneur, um, specifically as a as a sailor, um, you know, fits hand in hand based on the many things that they've asked us to do. Um, but back to the Grand Valley Veterans Entrepreneurship Lab, it's it's such an awesome program, and I'm very honored that I've been asked and I was asked to participate in it in its uh, initial startup. And uh, as Julie said, she's led a, a cohort um, along with myself and a few other partners to, to, you know, inspire and provide pathways for veterans and, you know, military um, connected individuals to truly recognize that they have a specific talent um, and it just requires some guidance. And so the MVE lab, we really do a great job at you know, finding out the strengths in addition to recognizing where some of the weaknesses are and providing our cohort members the opportunity to excel at what they're not great at and take off at what they're really good at. And we do a lot of that by mentorship. We do a lot of that by, you know, letting them test their ideas um, and just connecting them to people within the community that will, you know, uh, help play a role in their uh in their development as an entrepreneur um and so we're launching another cohort this upcoming september 
And uh, as a result of our success in the leadership at Grand Valley, you know, we've parted with some key figures in the state to expand the work that we've done. And, and heard now about that, we're, the Michigan Veterans Trust Fund has, uh, has invested in you guys and you're spreading out. That's, oh, that's wonderful news. Absolutely. And so we're expanding to various places throughout the state, bringing this model to different universities, hoping that we can connect more veterans locally and, and inspire them to pursue their, their entrepreneurial goals. Um, yeah. So it sounds like a, a great program. And just to be clear, much like Kristen's program, you do not require the people coming to you to be students at your institution. They just need to be in the local community. Absolutely. Um, and part of the reason that is very important is veterans in particular, we come out at various stages of our lives. Um, and I really believe, and along with Julie and the entire GVSU staff, we truly believe to truly impact veterans, you need to meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can't expect a veteran to be in the school in order to impact his or her sure. community. Yep. And so, yes, we take veterans where they're at, whether they're been out 10, 15 years, or they're just coming out, they're in the school, or they're in another school, but yet, you know, they find more uh, relationship with our school through this program. And so, no, they don't have to be a student. Um, right. And so I think that's what that, in my opinion, is the benefit that we find them where they're at yep. and we help them get and to that next step. Give them that tailored thing. Just, I know that how Kristen does that, you know, that someone comes in and, you know, some people come through the door and they're like, Hey, I've got a partner. I've got an idea. I've already actually raised a little funding for my family. I've got the beginnings of a prototype. And now I really need help figuring out the legality of intellectual property and whatever else. But Kristen might also have somebody come in and say, I just really want to be an entrepreneur. How do I do that? And those are two completely different cats, right? One yeah. of them, one of them is one of them is a completely different place than the other, and they need totally different things. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's great. Um, and it's it's I love the, the the tailored thing. So just to emphasize, you know, for those who are listening, right? This is these two programs, and there are others like this, but these are really premier programs in these areas. You know, you don't have to have the idea, right? You can come in and just engage in sort of getting smarter about entrepreneurship and, and learn about the ideation process and learn about how to sort of, you know, create, be creative and come in with this sort of, you know, expanding idea of all the possible things and then narrowing it back down and coming up with something that you think can actually uh, become an idea that might sustain some entrepreneurship. Those are all really yeah, great. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and let's bring, let's introduce our next guest is Matt, Matt uh, Sherwood. And um, he is from Vet Biz Central, which is also a VBOC. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what that means. This is a wonderful, three, covers three states, uh, not just Michigan. Um, so we'll focus a little bit on Michigan, but just know that, that this is a very broad program. And it's uh, basically channeling all sorts of business resources towards veterans um, with the additional backing of the VA. So welcome, Matt. And let's hear a little bit more about the VBOC. Yeah, thanks for having me, Eric. Um, Vet Biz Central, we're a nonprofit and we were created under the provisions of Public Law 106-50, the Veteran Business Entrepreneurship Act of 1999. Our organization was founded by a gentleman, Navy veteran named Ed Ronders. Uh, Ed founded the organization back in 2006 and applied for his first grant with the SBA in, in 2009, and that's when I came on board and been here ever since. So our agency serves military personnel, veterans, National Guard and Reserve members and their family members, along with military spouses. We do have a three-state region under the SBA, Office of Veteran Business Development. So we're not funded by the VA. We're funded by the SBA, Small Business Administration. And the three states that we cover are Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. And some of the services that we provide here, all of which are free, by the way, um, help you with developing a business plan, generating uh, financial projections for business plans, maybe the veteran's interested in buying or selling a business, so resources to help them with that, uh, managing financy, finances and analyzing cost, helping them identify sources of capital, uh, business growth strategies, uh, procuring government contracts, earning business certifications. So we kind of work out of a couple silos here, uh, the pre-venture startup client and then the existing client. And I would say right now we're running at about 75 to 85 percent of our clients are pre-venture startup. So thinking about starting a business, kicking around the tires, hey, how do I do it? What are my resources? 
where's my free money that I can do this? Um, so we have those conversations with clients and simply to get engaged with us, you, you visit our website, vetmiscentral.org. Right on the homepage, you'll see a red box called eCenter. You click on that box and uh, input your contact information. A little bit of information about myself. I'm an Army veteran, uh, served uh, at Fort Bragg. Growing up, I was always entrepreneurial, uh, mowing lawns, selling ice creams, anything I could do to make a buck. Uh, took that uh, time into the service and uh, was medically separated during a training accident and really was throwing a monkey wrench in life and, hey, what am I going to do now? And, and really started thinking about, you know, what my skill sets were. More importantly, what the military had taught and trained to me during my, my time in service. And I thought that entrepreneurship and, and business ownership would be a great path to build upon those foundations that uh, are instilled with us in the military, discipline, leadership, attention to detail. A lot of the key attributes that make successful entrepreneurs are really drilled in us during our time in our military service. So going back to 2009, again, we, we received a one-year pilot program with the SBA. They awarded three centers, us, St. Louis, and uh, Boston, uh, after that pilot program, they expanded it to, to more and did a five-year uh, grant program. We won that, uh, submitted after that for a three-year, won that, submitted for a five-year, which we're currently on and, and running on that operation uh, funding right now. So we're funded entirely by the Small Business Administration. Uh, I stepped down in, as director. I served as director from 2012 to 2020. I now focus my efforts on uh, lead business advisement with the organization. Now, a fellow Navy veteran that, that I hired, Avron Andrews, I passed him the torch and mentored him as being the director for the organization. And Avron has just really taken the torch and excelled with the program. So um, it, it's a great program. It, it's not cookie cut counseling. We really try to do a deep dive into where that veteran is in the business cycle and get them engaged with local and regional resources. And, and again, you know, Michael mentioned the, the importance of, of mentorship. I'm a firm believer in, in, in the mentorship process of starting a business or even having a business and having that, that mentorship in place where you can ask questions, get guidance, feedback. And we have a variety of resource partners that we connect with here as a VBOC. Primarily, we use the SBDCs, Small Business Development Centers, throughout the state and throughout our region. We use SCORE. We use uh, for government contracting the PTAC organization. There's also an SBA-funded program called VIP, Veterans for Institute of Procurement, which is really geared at those veterans that want to go into the government contracting side of, of expanding their business. And more importantly, you know, we, we connect with local and regional resources like, like the groups here on the call uh, today, Julie's group. And uh, certainly I'm familiar with Kristen's organization down there. Eric, I'm familiar with what you're doing in, in uh, Ann Arbor as well. So, again, it, it, to me, if I don't know something, I think there's real value in having a formal introduction and an introduction, a warm introduction to a resource partner that we can do a handoff with clients and again, maybe maybe some of the resource partners on, on the call have, have expertise in, in some areas that perhaps no one in our organization does. So it's really important that, that we continue to work together. Our missions are all the same, and that's to help veteran businesses start, grow, or expand. For sure. So, so knowing that, you know, I feel real comfortable and confident in our program. Right now, the flagship programs with the SBA is called Boots to Business. Uh, Boost to Business is an entrepreneurship track of the Department of Defense Transition Assistance Program, and it's offered on military installations worldwide. We also do a hybrid program to that called Boots to Business Reboots, and basically it's an extension of the Boots to Business program. We deliver the same information and content, but we reach out to veterans, National Guard, reserve members, military spouses, and immediate family members. So that's a little bit about, about our program and what we do here. And, and again, I really appreciate the, uh, the collaboration to, to talk and meet with everybody today to, to share the resources available to our veteran business community. Yes, absolutely. I love it. 
that's appreciate it. And I'm glad to see we've got the, the Navy's got the army slightly outnumbered today. So that's good, but uh, <laughs> it's all, all friends here. And thanks for correcting me there. I mentioned earlier, the VA is back. I really was meaning more like federal government kind of agency. The SBA is definitely the, and the SBDCs for Michigan are definitely a big part of um, what's behind uh, vet biz central and whatnot. And I, I think it's an interesting chance to make some connections here because I know that for example, at WCC and at Kristen center, literally right across the hall, you have is the Michigan SBDC center, right? And so, for example, you can go in there and you tell to Kristen, oh, you know, I just need some help with marketing. I can't quite my search engine optimization. I just I'm not getting the clients and I'm and so let's go over there and they'll sit down with you and they will pull up uh, heat maps and help you figure out where your customers are and help you think about, you know, direct email marketing or whatever else you need to do. Um, so these sorts of resources are, are, are really valuable. And I don't know if, you know, Kristen and, and Julie, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, if, to the degree that you partner with or, or steer people towards these resources, um, you know, and, and what kind of value they provide. For Absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. So what happens when somebody comes to us, they fill out a very short intake, very easy intake and tell us who you are, what business you're interested in, or just an idea, or just like you said, if you're interested in entrepreneurship in general, uh, we don't have any delineation of where you have to be at. We just meet you where you're at. So we do first uh, a virtual or we used to do in-person meetings. We, we will get back to that soon enough. Um, in fact, in the fall, we will be by appointment on campus. So we will be sort of slowly reopening. Um, but the person will come to us through that intake form and then we meet one-on-one and we talk about where you're at, what resources you might need, and we do a resource gathering session. So what that means is that we provide you with a follow-up email with all sorts of links and maybe business model canvas docs, um, documents that help you fill out a business um, plan or a pre-business plan. We like to talk about that a lot because a lot of people come to us, some 60 plus percent are really in that very early ideation idea phase, startup phase, very early, just sort of putting the pieces together. So we have a lot of tools and documents we can share with you. Um, At that point, we might say, yeah, you do need to see the SBDC. Let's connect you there or Vet Biz Central, or it might be something very specific to your industry. Um, Detroit Food Lab, let's say if you're in the food business industry. Um, What we're trying to do is connect you to resources that are helpful for you. If you're a veteran, if you're a person of color, if you're a female business owner, um, if you're a young business owner, let's say a student, um, we know about a lot of specialized resources, but then we also want to connect you to the broader ecosystem, which means, you know, the whole connection of all of us out there. Um, The fancy name would be ESOs, entrepreneurial support organizations, but there's so many of us, but, but, like you said, Matt, we're, we're, we can be specialized. Some of them are specialized. Um, some of them support tech businesses. Some of them support food entrepreneurs. Um, some of them support who you are again, veterans. Um, so that we, we try to connect you from there. We also have an entrepreneur in residence program ourselves. And um, what that is in the fall will be up to eight different individuals who give their time to speak to our clients one-on-one and they may be specialized in marketing. They may be specialized in um, the arts. We get a lot of artists coming to us, musicians and artists and graphic designers. Um, And we're happy to say Dr. Fretz will be our, one of our entrepreneurs in residence for the fall and he will be offering appointments and you can meet with him. Um, So that's sort of another layer we have after you meet with us one-on-one We do the resource gathering. Then we might connect you to our own entrepreneur in residence um, based on your needs um, or again, connect you outward. So there's, there's so much out there. And again, as my, myself as a business owner, I didn't know all of this. I didn't know all the resources that were there for female business owners. Um, I didn't know that the special funding that was out there, I didn't know um, resources, connections until I really did go to the SBDC actually and that got me more connected and got me a lot more resources from there. So, yeah, that's what we do. We just try to connect you to where you need to be. 
Yeah, I think that's really the tremendous value here of all the groups here now. And as you mentioned, all these other entrepreneurial service organizations is if you're interested in veteran entrepreneurs or a veteran wants to be an entrepreneur, get out and engage these processes. Because just like when you showed up at your first duty station or, you, well, you maybe didn't figure it out at your first duty station, but at your second duty station, you went to the guy who had your job before you and said, hey, buddy, you know, or hey, ma'am, <laughs> let me, what, what are the key things I got to not mess up in this? Give me, what's the last you know, inspection results look like. Show me all the things that you learned the hard way so I don't have to relearn them and get those bruises myself. And that small business is exactly the same way where if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, boy, you know, go ahead and stand on the shoulders of the folks that or you know, use the lift that people are trying to give you um, because, boy, trying to do it all on your own, that uh, that's not the best route. Um, so this has been great so far. I think we're going to take a short break and then come back. Um, again, this is Dr. Eric Fretz. We're talking about federal entrepreneurship with our guests, Matt Sherwood, Julie Cowie, Kristen Gatsby, and Michael Hyacinth. And we'll be back after a short break to talk a little bit more about uh, interesting things in the veteran entrepreneur space. The Medal of Honor is the highest award for valor in combat given a member of the Armed Forces of the United States. There have been over 3,400 recipients of the nation's highest award. This is one of them. Captain Louis Millet was wounded by grenade fragments but refused evacuation. Details after this. If you have a VA claim denied by the Board of Veterans' Appeals, contact Legal Help for Veterans at 1-800-693-4800. They're experts in handling cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans' Claims. Their number again, 1-800-693-4800. While personally leading his company in an attack against a strongly held Korean position, Millett noted that the 1st platoon was pinned down by small arms, automatic, and anti-tank fire. Millett ordered the 3rd platoon forward, placed himself at the head of the two platoons, and with fixed bayonet, led the assault up the fire-swept hill. In the fierce charge, he bayoneted two enemy soldiers and boldly continued on, throwing grenades, clubbing and bayoneting the enemy while urging his men forward by shouting encouragement. Despite vicious opposing fire, the whirlwind hand-to-hand -hand assault carried to the crest of the hill. His leadership and personal courage so inspired his men that they stormed into the hostile position and used their bayonets with such lethal effect that the enemy fled in wild disorder. During this fierce onslaught, Millet was wounded by grenade fragments but refused evacuation until the objective was taken and firmly secured. The Medal of Honor series is a production of Veterans Radio. Military veterans touch everyone's life. I'm guessing right now you're thinking of a veteran. A close friend, relative, maybe it's you. Even the toughest of us sometimes need help, but don't know where to turn for support. You don't need special training to help a veteran in your life. We can all help someone going through a difficult time. Learn how you can be there for veterans. Visit VeteransCrisisLine.net. VeteransCrisisLine.net. A message from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. This is Dale Throneberry from Veterans Radio with an important announcement for you, our loyal listeners. In partnership with U.S. Wings, we are bringing back our monthly flight jacket giveaway. Beginning right now, you can win a Top Gun Maverick flight jacket. This is U.S. Wings' recreation of the exact CWU jacket worn in the upcoming Top Gun 2 Maverick movie. It is made from military-grade satin nylon. The patches on the jacket are authentic military patches supplied to Paramount Pictures for the Top Gun movie. This jacket could be yours. All you have to do to, is register to win. Go to veteransradio.net, click on the flight jacket, and register to be in the drawing to win this month's Top Gun flight jacket. The winner will be announced on our monthly benefits program, which is the last program of each month. Don't miss out on your chance to win this incredible U.S. Wings Top Gun flight jacket. Go to veteransradio.net and register now. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Dr. Eric Fretz, and we're here for our second part of our discussion about entrepreneurship for veterans. Um, back with me again is the director of WCC's Entrepreneurship Center, Kristen Gatsby. Uh, we have Matt Sherwood from Vet Biz Central and the VBOC for Michigan and two other states. And we have Julie Cowie and Michael Hyacinth from the Grand Valley State University's Veteran Entrepreneurship Lab. We've had a great discussion already about the different programs that they have and connections between them. For this uh, next section, I'd like to talk a little bit just about um, a couple of interesting 
interesting questions that I had for you. Um, but before we go into the questions, I always love hearing kind of like the great stories, right? I know like this from some of my classes, it's always like, what's the coolest thing your students did last term kind of thing. So I was wondering if each of you might just share a brief one or two minute, here's something really cool that happened for a veteran within the programs that um, I'm, I'm working with. So does anybody want to take the lead on that? Or I could just pick someone or uh, looks like Matt would like to give it to, yeah, Matt, tell us, tell us something interesting that happened. Yeah, so every year uh, through Michigan Celebrate Small Businesses, they, they do small business awards. Uh, and, and typically over the last 10 plus years, we've provided the winning nomination for the Michigan Veteran Business of the Year. In 2020, obviously with COVID, um, things took a big change. Um, so we had a client named Nate McFadden. Julie might be familiar with Nate. He's over in the Grand Rapids area, works in the elevator industry. And Nate McFadden is a service disabled veteran uh, business owner of Elevated Technologies Incorporated. And we submitted the nomination for Nate to be the 2020 Michigan Veteran Business of the Year. And that nomination was so well received and so well liked, they elevated that to Michigan Small Business Person of the Year. So that was a real big feather in our cap uh, as a nominating agency, but also uh, Nate as well uh, to receive that recognition for his outstanding work that he's done. Um, just just uh, this year, SBA came out to Grand Rapids and we did a formal video success story. So that can be seen on sba.gov forward slash success stories. And it was just a great story to, to highlight Nate's hard work. Uh, and, and what he's put into his business and, and his employees and how he's adapted and overcame and become such a very successful service disabled veteran business owner. I work with Nate on veteran business certifications, engaging in the government contracting side, and Nate really excelled. And, and, and now Nate's in 29 states. He's a multimillion dollar business. And it's, it's just great to see those success stories out there and knowing that in some small way, we had a part of that and made success. So great. that's 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 one of the success stories that I like to share with the audience. I love it. I love it. Okay, um, Julie, what 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 do you what story do you got for us? Sure, I've got a husband wife couple that I'd like to talk about. Um, Nicholas Kaminsky, veteran, came through our second cohort, and at the time, he was producing honey and raising bees. And he had gone through a really wonderful program that MSU Extension offers to teach beekeeping to veterans. And then he really wanted to build his business. And through the course of our three months, we helped him think through how he, his revenue streams and kind of moving away from going to a farmer's market, hoping somebody stops by your table and buys a bottle of honey. There's nothing wrong with that. But he realized his talent was in raising queen bees especially queens that can survive the Michigan winters. So that became his niche. And he has really developed hickory tree farm apiary. And then two cohorts later, his wife, Nicole, came through our cohort. She was working. And, and by the way, Nick was our $5,000 grand prize winner and put that money into buying more hives. Then Nicole came through and she was producing items with beeswax. Um, and, you know, upon completing our cohort where she was the second prize winner and went, won $3,000, um, you know, has some patent, uh, patentable idea perhaps about some new products that she's working with. Then the two of them have been accepted into the Bunker Labs program. So we love the fact that our very entry level program where people bring their raw ideas mm -hmm. and figure out if they actually have customers. Um, we prepare people for the next level, whether that is that is central on the deep dive that Matt mentioned, you know, like we teach people how to even think about spreadsheets right. so they could be ready for an SBDC counselor. Right. And by the way, they are located in the same building as our center. So we love those SBD folks right across the hall. So that's the success Absolutely. story. Another success story is our own director uh, of Michigan Veterans Affairs, Director Zanetta Adams, who prior to her um, receiving that uh, position, she actually went through the cohort and she was one of the winners. Uh, and so... 
Oh, I think we might have lost you a little to, bit. To um, women, entrepreneur, women veteran entrepreneurs and women veterans in particular. But, you know, um, she came in. She wanted to figure out how to continue to expand her her services and her products. And, um, you know, throughout the 10 weeks, uh, she was able to really establish that to the point where people were recognizing her her um, her commitment to veterans. And, and I would like to say that I think, you know, we were we played a role in, in the awesome work that she's currently doing for the state. And so it's uh, it's an awesome program. And we see people of various backgrounds at various positions come through the program. And at the end of the program, the great thing is everybody wins. Um, some of them win cash, but everybody ends up a winner because um, of the partnerships that they've developed, of the the education that they've learned. And one of the key things that we truly focus on, and I think what makes us stand out, is that we truly try to educate our uh, cohort members the business of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Not every entrepreneur is a business person, but to be an entrepreneur it does require um, you know, a level of understanding of, of who to connect with, what resources do you have capacity to, when to pivot, um, you know, so all those things are very valuable. And uh, I'm happy to say that many of our cohort members have succeeded um, awesome. in in understanding, you know, those specific directions. All right. Yeah, that's a great story. I'll have to mention that to her. I, I work with uh, Director Adams uh, with some of my work as uh, the director, or I'm the chair of VCAT 9 for the MVAA, so I have to mention that to her. So, Kristen, you got a success story for us? Absolutely. This is great, hearing all these great stories. So during the pandemic, we went to remote operations. Our whole campus did, so the center did as well. And in some ways, in, in a terrible year, it was a great year for the center because we were so poised to help local business owners, and again, especially micro enterprise owners, meaning those very small businesses. Um, And we got a lovely grant from Spark and the uh, Washtenaw County Office of Community and Economic Development to hold a new program we call Renew Your Business Training and Grant Program. And this was aimed very specifically at uh, uh, business owners in the 48197 and 48198 zip codes, which is the eastern side of Washtenaw County. And the business owners had to be either uh, minority owner, female owner, or veteran owner. And we got a nice cohort of 15 together, and they got uh, a 10-week rebuild course, and then eight weeks of peer group uh, peer group meetups with a business mentor leading the way, and then a small business grant of $2,500. Um, and the, the cohort grew so tight, and they just made it through because it was right in the middle of the pandemic. And to apply not, not only all those conditions, of course, but that you had to have a business that was impacted negatively by COVID and you were taking steps to move forward. Um, so we're very proud we were able to offer that program. And and the whole intent is not to only, of course, um, buck up these, these businesses and hopefully, you know, help them see how to pivot and grow and move back out of this, but to create bonds that go into the future in, in such a hyper-local um, region. Um, and create some, some business owner connections and peer support that maybe wasn't there before um, or they didn't know each other before. So the program itself was wonderful and all 15 completed, graduated, and are moving up and out and, and had incredible successes. And one veteran business owner, Giuseppe Del, Del Judas, has a company, it's an app that he created called Wheel Potential, and he shifted to Be Positive, which is the name of it now. He'd been developing that app for decades. And through this program, just in this four months under such pressure, you know, with the pandemic happening, um, he was able to rename it, um, rebuild it, put it back out there, refocus and just have he's moving up and out and having great success. So it's really exciting to see um, not only, of course, him as a veteran get, you know, get success and move forward, um, but for these group of business owners to really connect and, and go through this together and move up and up. Awesome. Yeah. Having a, having a network of supporters and just people to talk to, but also people to share resources with and tips. Yeah. So important to do that. So well, those are some really great stories and I really appreciate you sharing those. Um, let's uh, shift here now to just looking at a couple of questions. I'm just going to kind of pose them and, and offer a thought or two. And then, I, you know, to the degree that the question or the 
my statement resonates with you. You can kind of agree, disagree. We'll kick it around a little bit. It doesn't have to be a huge, deep discussion. And I've just got a couple of these, and I think it would be kind of interesting. One of the ones is, you know, I really feel like veterans are kind of uniquely suited to enter the entrepreneurial space. I wouldn't say that every veteran is guaranteed success as an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is a very, you know, business is a very painful arena, and veterans fail just like anybody else fails. But there is something about entrepreneurship that I think, it, you know, the military tends Tends to bias the sample. I think that the military veterans tend to have been taught a high degree of self-reliance and they tend to be willing to sort of uh, suffer at a higher level, like put in more hours and, and sort of grind something out. I think they've also really learned the value of leadership and the power of being your own leader, that oftentimes, you know, it can be frustrating to come out of the military into the civilian world and find leadership lacking. And the way that you never have a bad boss is you become the boss, right? And then you don't have to worry about that. Um, and so I think that and, and a couple of other areas really mark veterans as uniquely suited for um, working as entrepreneurs. And I was wondering what you guys thought about that. Agree, disagree um, from what you've seen in your own experiences. What do you think? I'll quickly uh, chime in. I completely agree with you. Um, I think it's the ability to adapt in various situations that equip veterans to be great entrepreneurs. Yes, you have chain of commands. Yes, you know, you have an SOP, but physically, emotionally, environmentally, all of that is new. And so you have to quickly adjust and figure out, you know, what are the best things that I'm going to do in order to succeed and ultimately the mission succeeds. So many of us are able to take those um, traits and develop them into opportunities that we can transition when we separate from the military. In addition to recognizing that failure is potentially part of the mission. While we don't aim for failure, it is part of recognizing that, hey, not every um, mission will be won, but it's the fact that you're persistent, you're continuing to pursue that, which makes us um, stand out. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. What do you think, Julie? I, I really notice it uh, when um, we bring in our mentors and our veterans and our participants are coachable. I mean, not a hundred percent. So I'm going to be honest there, but some you veterans can really are cranky. Tell, yeah. You know, you can really tell those who have learned like they've had superiors and they've learned from them and they respect that. And you see that behavior and, you know, coachability, we all know is like a huge factor in your success as an entrepreneur. So that's one thing I've noticed. Mm -hmm, for sure. Matt or Kristen, did you have any thoughts? Not required. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I, I certainly wanted to mention was the uptick that we're seeing in um, women veterans that are interested in starting a business. That's our number one demographic right now. Awesome. And, and I'm, you know, I'm amazed at the difference between a woman veteran coming to us and a man veteran coming to us, just with their preparation, their skill sets. Um, many of them already have a business plan, which is, I, I can't say for, for my counterpart in the male world, uh, they come to us with an idea and kind of want, want us to write the business plan. Um, but one of the, the unique things that I it, it really wrapped my arms around is, is just the success of women veteran entrepreneurs in, in the day and age that we're living in now. Uh, and, and again, those skill sets that they're taught and trained and in, in, in instilled in the military are the same as the male's. But it's just a different level of thinking, I think, um, right brain versus left brain type stuff. And, you know, we, we've had just so much success with women entrepreneurs and, and, and their preparation and coming to us and wanting to be successful as a business owner. And one of the things, you know, again, mentioned, Michael mentioned it, we really don't talk about failure rates, but it is pretty prevalent. You know, business failure rates are still at about 50 percent. Uh, maybe a little bit higher now with, with, with COVID. So, you know, failure to me is just another opportunity to learn. And I try to instill that in clients, you know, don't be afraid, you know, don't step out of your box, get unfamiliar with familiar things. Um, and, and the last thing I really wanted to talk about was veterans and franchising. And again, another business model, 
but veterans that start franchises are twice as likely to succeed versus non-veterans. And I really think that goes back and attributes to our time in the military. Most veterans were checklist environment type yep. people. Know the system, the, learn the system, execute yeah, the system. Absolutely. Give us the recipe and let us make the cake. And, and, and again, I, I think there's uh, a lot of success stories with veteran franchise business owners out there right now. Uh, again, the, the typical challenge with that is, is the capital entry point. But again, those things can certainly be worked on uh, through mentorship and, and, and financial counseling. Um, but that'd be my two cents on the topic. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that. And I definitely see that same sort of a bias in my, I teach uh, you know, several hundred undergraduates uh, every term. And so I end up forming about 60 teams. And there is a definite bias on the successful teams. It's not 100%, but but more than more than 50%. Are, are led and run by women. And there's some interesting research about the higher average social sensitivity, that sort of emotional intelligence that bringing that sort of teamwork skills to the table. Um, Kristen, you have thought? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to say, I agree with everything everyone said. I, I think veterans are, are so well suited. And um, like you said, Dr. Fred, they can grind it out. And I don't think having been a business owner myself and, and knowing that 24 seven attitude you have to have toward it, um, it's your baby. It's everything. I think that veterans get that. And sometimes we get people coming who want to run businesses who just don't get it. And they think they are going to work for themselves, but they don't understand how bad of a boss you can, you can be. <laughs> you can, you've got to go 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, but I wanted to speak to Matt's point, especially um, because we are seeing a, a huge increase in our female clients. Um, and we would see maybe 55% of our clients a year we're females. Now we're seeing in the pandemic, 65% plus. Um, and we know that the pandemic has hit women harder. So there's great opportunity there if, if you want to just try something new, but there's also necessity sometimes. Um, and there's lots of opportunity for females, female veterans, um, special funding for female business owners, um, special funding for female business owners of color. So there's lots of opportunities and you just don't know these things sometimes um, unless you talk to one of us. So I think that that's a very important thing to note, uh, the, the specialized resources that are out there. Um, and real quickly, I just wanted to note too that I appreciate so much that so many of the veteran support programs offer it to veteran spouses as well. Because I've seen a number of our clients who are veterans come in with their partner, and both of them are running the business. And maybe one is a, not a veteran, but they're very much supporting and understanding that veteran. Um, so I appreciate that very much, that there's a lot of support out there for military spouses, too. Awesome. All right. This has been great stuff. We've got a lot of great discussion so far. I think some really uplifting stories. And um, I think what we'll do in terms of wrapping things up is I'd like to just kind of go around to each of you. And my request to you is to share, you know, one or two of what you think are like the top resources. So for our listeners out there who are veterans thinking about entrepreneurship or maybe already being entrepreneurs, you know, we've, we've hit some of the big ones. Obviously, these programs are pretty key and SBA and, 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 and those sorts of things. So th those were sort of on the table. What else is there? What is the sort of the hidden gem that maybe, you know, you know about or that you wish more people knew about? So a combination of best resources for veteran entrepreneurship and then sort of your best tip, your one tip for, for veterans interested in entrepreneurs. And I'll, I'll kind of, um, you know, lead off and say that the one tip I would say for the veterans, you know, is the same thing I do for my undergrads, which is you've just got to jump. Don't be afraid to make that leap. There is this sort of, you know, uh, this concern to sort of manage risk down to the finest detail. And, you know, the bottom line is you're not going to know until you try. And just, you know, basically go ahead and make that leap. If this is something that interests you, if you can tolerate the risk, you'll you'll find out whether you can do it by trying to do it, right? So I'm just a big encouragement to do it. Take that leap. Um, and so what else um, do you guys say? We'll start with Julie. Yeah, I'd say two things. That's a good question, by the way. Um, what I love, this is a bit of a plug, but what I love about Michigan Veteran Entrepreneur Lab is our cohort format. And what I have experienced from running six cohorts is that people learn so much from each other. Even if they're having an off night, as we've had plenty of off nights running cohorts during a pandemic, right? And people are exhausted and they've had, haven't had dinner maybe and they come and they have low energy and then they learn from somebody else's entrepreneurial journey that night. 
So I'm a big fan of education, of course, based at Grand Valley. Look for an educational program. Cohort models can be very energizing like ours. And then I'd say the key is focused around the business model canvas. And I'm sure my colleagues here on this call use the business model canvas. I know as an entrepreneur, it changed my life when I discovered the business model canvas, like, you know, eight or nine years ago, it organized my thinking as an entrepreneur who was brimming with ideas and often lacked focus, right? So let's just confess. So this is the tool that is so life-changing for entrepreneurs out there who are uh, full of ideas and need to figure out how to start, where to start, how to put things in order, how to address everything. So the business model canvas as the tool and a cohort model as a source of support. Awesome. I would say connecting with your local and regional entrepreneurial ecosystem is really, really important, particularly for pre-venture startups. A lot of them need hand-holding, face-to-face counseling, mentorship. And as a funded resource partner of the SBA, you know, I, I certainly talk frequently about the value of connecting with your SBDC network. The small business development centers are, are going to know the local regional lending environment. They're going to know other organizations that, that are there locally and regionally that you can connect with and, and have inter- interaction and engagement with. From a mentorship Chip standpoint, I certainly talk about SCORE, another SBA-funded resource partner that provides free mentorship, one-on-one counseling. They try to match you up with someone who has industry knowledge and experience in what you're setting out to do. And then the last couple of things I really wanted to touch on was validating your idea through market research and having that business plan. Because without validating your idea in the marketplace... Just because mom and pop and and friends and family Mm -hmm. think it's a good idea doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. That's I tell my students all the time. You don't, don't, don't let your friends or your family be the basis of your surveys because your friends, they'll all tell you they want to buy your thing. And then you produce the thing. Oh, actually, no, I don't want to actually buy it. I just wanted to, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Encouragement and market research are a little bit different. So again, validating your idea through, through market research is critically important to me. And again, that's followed by a strong business plan. And whether that's, I've read business plans that clients have brought to me on, on bar napkins. And, and let's work with that, okay? I was encouraged that they wrote something down, yeah. but let's kind of put it in, 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 in tune it up a little bit and, in, in, and organize it a little bit better. Get it banker ready. And absolutely. You know, and that business canvas model is something that we talk about frequently, and I share that with clients. And the other tool that we use here is called Live Plan, a formalized business software program that, that lets you work on your business plan. It lets you invite users to it where other people can be engaged with your business plan. So market preparation and research, and then followed by a, a solid business plan are, are my tips. Okay. Yeah, I was going to add, first of all, I keep forgetting to mention our uh, website. So we, the Entrepreneurship Center at Washtenaw Community College is at ec.wccnet.edu. So a couple of things specifically about when you come to us, for example, we have a, um, a great spreadsheet of specific resources for veterans. Uh, we also have an online library guide for veteran business resources. So those are a couple of very specific things for you that we will connect you to. Um, but Matt got there first. My tip was going to be market research. Um, you, it, it can sound intimidating. It can sound sort of academic, market research, but basically... It's just looking at three main things, Um, your industry as a whole, what's going on, what are the trends, your competition, who's doing what, even, um, you know, kind of competition that's not exactly in the same exact area of your business, but that people could spend those those same funds on or those same, that same disposable income on. Um, And then your, your target market, who are your customers? And at WCC, we have free market research help. And we call it our Startup Business Research Hours. And you can book time with a librarian for free. And again, you don't have to be a student. Um, And they will help you work through those three points. And they can't do the market research for you, but they can help you um, kind of suss out those those three topics according to your industry and your idea. And it's, you know, vital. If you don't do that, you kind of don't know which direction to go in. Mm -hmm. So I would research. 
All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I think um, in closing, and thank you so much, Eric, for the time uh, and, and being a part of this panel. One of the things I would strongly encourage is just continuing to network. Um, I think the value that other entrepreneurs can provide entrepreneurs themselves are, are pretty invaluable. And so making yourself um, committed to go out there, discuss what your plans are. Um, and yes, some are, you know, intellectually protected, but the only way you learn is if you're sharing concepts and ideas with other like-minded entrepreneurs. For sure. And so I strongly encourage entrepreneurs to build a network, whether that's veterans um, within, you know, a specific organization or just go out there and, and, and see what other entrepreneurs are doing and participate in those initiatives. Yep. And, um, and I strongly uh, encourage that. And I'm happy to say that, you know, the GVSU Michigan Veterans Entrepreneurship Lab, we've developed, a, a, you know, a cohorts that continue to stay engaged and connect with each other and they share their successes and their failures. And I encourage all entrepreneurs, veteran and non-veteran, to, to build that network. All right. Thanks very much. That was Michael Hyacinth and Julie Cowie from the G Grand Valley State um, Veterans Entrepreneur Lab. They can be found at www.gvsu.edu slash MVE. And uh, we've also had Matt Sherwood from Vet Biz Central. He's at vetbizcentral.org. And I've been your host, Dr. Eric Fretz, for this episode of Veterans Radio. I um, hope you learned a lot about veterans and entrepreneurship, and we'll catch you next time. We hope you enjoyed today's program with guest host Dr. Eric Fretz. Let us know what you think. Leave your comments on our website, veteransradio.net. If you have a story idea you'd like us to talk about or you'd like to be a guest host yourself or be on the program, contact us at, again at our website. Just click on the Contact Us button. Finally, I want to remind you to enter the join for the U.S. Wings Flight Jacket and tune in next week for our benefits program. Our health care and disability experts will be here to answer all of your questions. So until next time, this is Dale Throneberry. And you are dismissed. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere. And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.